Welcome to Henderson Library's Home Edition. My name is Miss Rita and I'm going to share some string stories with you today. As you watch videos on the Henderson Library's YouTube channel, you're going to see wonderful books and stories that you can share this summer. And I like to share stories that are old, old stories that were told long before there were books, long before people could even write their own name. They used their head and their heart and their voice to share stories. But many times they like to find things around their house or in their yards to tell stories with. And one of the oldest ways to tell stories is using a string, just a simple piece of string. Old storytellers would use twine or maybe a rope or even part of a tree branch. But to tell the stories I'm gonna share with you today, there's only one trick you need to learn. And you can use this string trick to tell any story that you imagine. You need a string about 72 inches long, which is a yardstick measured, and then you cut it. So it's about 72 inches long, but you can make it shorter, you can make it a little longer. You just wanna have enough string so you can tell a story if your story is longer. Then when you cut your string, you just tie a knot in the end. And when you've tied the knot in the end of your string, and it's tight, you have a loop like this. And you can hold it up like that and your string hangs down. So the first, first story I'm gonna share with you today is called The Turnip. And I'm gonna tell you the story and perform the trick, and then I will show you step by step how I make the trick work. There was once a farmer who grew turnips. He planted the turnips, he watered the turnips, he pulled the weeds up between the turnips, and his turnip field was filled with ripe turnips. In fact, there was one turnip in his field that was larger than all the others. Now, if you've never seen a turnip, this is what a turnip looks like. It grows in the ground like a carrot, and this is just a medium-sized turnip. This is a turnip I bought at the grocery store and I'll cook for dinner this week. But the turnip in our story today was enormous. Picture this turnip and picture it at least 10, 20, maybe 30 times bigger than this one. I didn't see the enormous turnip, but I know it was big. Well, the farmer wanted to pull up that turnip. So he got a rope and he decided to pull the turnip. And my hand is gonna be the turnip in this story. And you can put the knot at the bottom or the bottom knot at the top, whichever feels better to you. And he pulled that turnip and he pulled that turnip and he pulled that turnip, but that stubborn turnip would not come up. So he decided to ask his wife to help. So we went over and he said, wife, will you help me pull this turnip? And the wife pulled and the farmer pulled, but that stubborn turnip would not come up. So they asked their grandson to help. And they said, grandson, will you help us pill, 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 pick up and pull up this big, enormous turnip? We're out of breath. So the grandson pulled, and the grandmother pulled, and the grandfather pulled, and they pulled, and they pulled, and they pulled, but that stubborn turnip would not come up. So finally, the grandson said, maybe my dog can help us. And he went and he asked his dog. And the dog came, and they all pulled that turnip. That turnip would not. Finally, the dog said, let's ask the cat. Because you see in some stories, dogs and cats are friends. And they asked the cat, and the cat said, I'll help you. And the cat pulled, and the dog pulled, and the grandson pulled, and the farmer pulled, and his wife pulled. But you can see, this stubborn turnip would not come up. What shall we do? Well, maybe if we sing to the turnip. Maybe you can even help because if you sing to the turnip along with me, maybe that turnip will just want to come right out of the ground. So they decided to sing to the turnip. And the first thing they did was they sang to the turnip like this. They, the first, uh, you put your string around your index finger and they pulled and they sang, turnip, turnip, come on up. Turnip, turnip, come on up. But they pulled and they pulled and they pulled and they pulled and that turnip would not come up. So they tried again and they sang a little, little bit louder. Maybe you can help me with this, ready? Turnip, turnip, come on up. Turnip, 
turnip, come on up. No use. Look, look at that. That turnip is not budging, even though they have that rope all the way around the turnip. So they tried one more time. Even louder, help me. Turnip, turnip, come on up. Turnip, turnip, come on up. Finally, they went one more time and they said, okay, let's do it. The grandfather pulled, the grandmother pulled, the little boy pulled, the dog pulled, and the cat pulled, and they all pulled, help me. Turnip, turnip, come on up. Turnip, turnip, come on up. But that stubborn turnip would not budge. And who came along but a little tiny mouse? And he was hopping through the field and he saw everyone pulling that rope. And he said, maybe I could help you. You, they said, you're just a small little mouse. We've been pulling all afternoon and we can't get the turnip to come up. Let me try, said the mouse. And the mouse went over to the last part of the rope and he took a little bit and a nibble and that tiny part of the rope came off. And then they all pulled one more time. One, two, and amazing that turnip came right up, just with a little bit of effort. Doesn't matter how big or how small you are, every little bit helps. Now, if you wanna tell this story at home, you just need your string, tie a knot at the end, and you can even, if your mom and dad know how to help you, you can even take a string and they can kind of melt the end of it so you don't even see the knot. But I just tie a knot at the end. It's safer. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do to do this trick is you're gonna just let the string hang on your thumb. Then you're going to take the string that's closest to you. So when you see both parts of the string hanging down, say, which one is closer to you? This one. And I wrap it around my first finger. Then I look at the strings again. I say, which one is closest to me? This one. I wrap it around the next finger. Which one is closest to me? This one. So I wrap it around the next finger. Which one is closest to me? This one. I wrap it around my last finger. Simple. The next part's a little tricky, but it's not that hard. When those two strings are hanging down, take the one that's farthest away from you and just put it across your hand and then make this string the farthest away from you. And don't put it around the pinky, but put it around your next finger. Now the rest is easy. Take the string that's farthest away from you, put it around the next finger. The string that's farthest away, put it around the next finger. The string that's farthest away, put it around the next finger. And doesn't it look like your fingers are tied tight? I mean, you can't even move them. But the last finger, if you just take the loop off of that last pinky and your pinky is free, and you give it one more pull, the whole string will come off. Now you can take this string story and you can make it into anything you want. You could have it be five cats, five dogs. You can imagine your own story. I'm gonna share a story with you from Africa. The first story, the turnip, came from Russia. But the second story is called the yams. And this is a sweet potato, which is very similar to a yam. It grows in the ground, just like a turnip. And this is a story about another farmer and his yams. It's the same trick. There was once a farmer who grew yams. He planted the yams. He watered the yams. He weeded the yams. And when it was time to pull up the yams, he decided to put them in some sacks. Now his yams were not enormous. They were just regular, normal sized yams. So he went out into his fields and he started to pull the yams out of the ground. And he kept pulling them. Remember, when you do this, you're gonna pick the one closest to you. Put it behind. I have to remember, sometimes I put it in front by mistake. Take the one closest to you and put it behind your first finger. Then the one closest. And he pulled those yams out of the ground and he pulled them out of the ground and he pulled them out of the ground until he had, let's count them, one, two, three, four, five bags filled with yams. Whew, he was tired after all that work and he said, I'm gonna wait till morning to take these to the market to sell. But while he was sleeping that night, there was a thief who had been watching him. Now this thief was lazy. He was too lazy to plant his own yams. So he decided to take the yams of the farmer and what he did is he went out and he gathered up 
all the bags of the ants. And when he had them all, he started to pull them toward the market. But they were heavy. They were really heavy. And the farmer heard the commotion, and he came out, and he yelled at that thief, and he said, Stop, thief! And the thief was so startled, he tripped. And when he did, the last bag fell to the ground. And when the last bag fell to the ground, all the yams fell out of all the bags. The thief ran away, and the poor farmer had to start over the next day putting the yams in the bags, but he had them all to take to market. So if you want to tell this story to someone else, let's do it one last time. We'll help that farmer pick up all his yams. Remember, just hang it off your thumb. The one closest to you, put around each finger in order. Then the tricky part is to take the one farthest away from you and just put it over your hand so the other one becomes farthest away. And take the farthest away and put it over each finger going backwards. Just behind each finger. And then your hand is fully, you can say, play this with a trick with a friend and say, look, you'll never get loose. You're tight, tight, tight. But then in your story, just make sure the last one comes off. And then with a very gentle pull, they will all come off. So thank you for watching. Make sure you imagine your own story. You can take a piece of string and make up any story in your own imagination. Please watch the Henderson Library YouTube channel. Look for more story times. And don't forget our summer reading challenge. Go online and imagine your own story. Thanks for watching.